Well, the grill and joining us today is family therapist Karen Phillip and journalist Angela Molloy. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Ken. First up, I was interested in this. There's been a surge in the number of students being homeschooled in Queensland with registrations up 234% in the past seven years. I thought, oh yeah, what does that mean? But it's estimated there are about 10,000 children in homeschool just in Queensland alone. So what do you think of this shift? It's a, it's a big shift, mm. a really big shift. It, I think it depends. There's certainly positives and negatives for both. It depends on the reason why they're homeschooling. Now, the article indicates that they're homeschooling because of NAPLAN fears and also bullying. So if you're pulling your children out to protect them, and we all want to protect our children, of course, but we're not teaching them the resilience they need to deal with these sorts of things. So I get a lot of kids through my rooms that have actually developed like an attachment disorder with their mum and they rely on her for everything. So while in primary school, there may be some positives, particularly if you're travelling around or if you live in the country. Yeah. Uh, you also really do need to develop that sense of community and also the socialisation. And once they get to high school, I can't see really yeah. any positives about homeschooling at all. They really need that socialisation. They need the, the difference in technology and they also need the capabilities that the teachers are trained for that the parents probably don't possess. Yeah, I think everything you're saying is absolutely right. My concern is that of these um, 10,000, we've got 85% though who aren't registered. Mm -hmm. So these children are neither registered with a school or neither registered with um, homeschooling. So where's the um, accountability there? Yeah. Do we know what they're actually being taught? Look, I found it really interesting looking at this mother's plan for the day. She had a list of what she does for the day. And, you know, it's all very interesting, playing in treehouse and things. But there she's put checks... What are the kids doing while she's doing that? Yeah. <laughs> check seedlings... <laughs> and check the rain gauge, but rain gauge is spelt incorrectly. So I'm yeah. sorry, the homeschooling's not up to par. Um, that's the thing. Look, I wouldn't be able to homeschool. I've been doing year five net plan tests with my daughter this week. I don't know the difference between sum and product, let alone, you know, year nine algebra. So mm. I think we have to, and, and what it's saying is that only 30% of parents can actually pass net plan tests. So are we actually equipped to teach them? Exactly this right. This fear about net plan is ridiculous. Oh, it is. I abs oh, gosh, yes. It, it's just another exam. It's a test. Yeah. I love it. I love it because well, you're not us... sitting down doing it. That's no. Funny. But when my children did it, when they were at school, my, my middle boy, very smart kid, he had um, a great maths and everything, but his comprehension skills showed that they were lower than what I expected. Mm. So then I would sit with him, he was a great reader, but his comprehension of what he was reading wasn't quite up to par. Yeah. So it gave me the, the possibility to therefore sit mm. with him and develop that. Now, without that result, I probably would have missed it. If, you, if your school is putting pressure on you about NAPLAN, you're going to a bad school. I but can I say it's insidious and it's creeping into it because we have the league tables and each teacher can now be measured and each school can now be measured. Yep. I can see the pressure they're under yeah. and you oh, can feel are. it within them. You know, mm. we know quite a few teachers. You can really sense that they need to know what how their class performs compared to another class. You can, you know. But I can't understand. Happening. Surely the teacher should know how the children are performing without an Aplan test. I mean, if a yes. teacher's Absolutely. a good teacher, they should know yeah. this. It's an artifice and it, it doesn't, you know, it, it is valuable in some ways, yes. but, but there shouldn't right. be any pressure on the individual about no, it. And no, and it's too rapid. You do not need testing every two years. Next up, if you're feeling stressed, I am now. We've got the NAPLAN thing happening. <laughs> One expert says it all, all it takes is a whiff of a familiar smell, like uh, your mother's perfume or freshly cut grass, to ease anxiety. Uh, scents associated with childhood are the most calming. Um, and I, I get that. I, I love the smell of the ocean or UV cream, the old mm. UV cream. Oh, uh, I can still see myself fidgeting while my mother tried to smother oh, my face with it. Oh, that's so cute. That, yeah. That's cute. <laughs> or home cooking. Pineapple juice was mine. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, we were only allowed pineapple juice when we went to holidays at Port Macquarie in the hotel mm. and we got breakfast on a tray and there was always pineapple juice. So I love pineapple juice smell. That's my oh, big one. That's gorgeous. <laughs> For me, it's hyacinths. When we, our daughter was born, someone brought a hyacinth to the hospital and I cannot smell that flower. And I have one in my office at the moment because I'm super stressed. So I've got one there and every time I walk into my office, there's this beautiful smell. But I'm with you going home. My, my husband doesn't eat lamb. I go home, my mum cooks the lamb and that smell is just my child. Yeah, that's, just that's, that's Sunday, isn't it? But when we, when we talk about smells also, we have the other side of things. I, and I get clients through that if they've had abuse issues when they've been young and this mostly relates to the women yeah. that come in, if they smell that same scent, uh, such as an aftershave that the perpetrator had, it will actually create a huge amount of, of stress for them. So while smells can be really nice and, and very refreshing and very relaxing, 
they can also have sometimes quite the opposite yeah, effect. Some smells can make you a bit melancholy. Very negative. Mm. Or petrol. God, I can't stand the smell of petrol. I love petrol. Probably the cost of filling it up yeah. <laughs> more than anything. Diesel, on the other hand. Oh, what well, you get on like that. <laughs> I like it. I'm with you. I like putty. <laughs> oh, gas. Uh, finally, so weird. <laughs> the latest trend in weddings is melting hearts around the world because what a lot of people are doing now, instead of just giving grandma a seat in the front row, which is traditional, they actually make grandma the flower girl. People honouring the generations in significant ways. Do you like this idea, Angela? I love it because I've been to a lot of weddings recently and I just think the whole thing reeks of fa fake tan. We've got endless, um, you know, dresses made of taffeta. It's all about the bride. It's all about how it looks. Choosing your grandma is about how it feels. It's about family. It's yes, about it pulling about them family. together. I think it's gorgeous. I love, you know, children in the party. I'd love to see a grandma. I think we need to shake up the conventions of weddings. The way that we do it is so anachronistic you know I when I got married I didn't want my dad walking me up the aisle so I had my mum and my dad Ooh, we need to chuck the system yeah I know, but we need to mix it up a bit and I think this is the loveliest thing you know there's a lot of uh, particularly with young women today mm. they're growing up they've actually been raised partly by their grandparents oh, because sure, you've got grandparents have. stepping in with childcare so they have very close, very close relationships. Relationships. and you do have to get mm. something old and something new in there don't you oh, <laughs> well I guess that's one way to look at it yeah <laughs> I mean I wouldn't have my grandmother I didn't like her so I wouldn't have oh, is that right? No, no. no. She wasn't a nice person. No, Ooh. sorry. What went down <laughs> there? Smell didn't bring back happy memories. No. Definitely bad memories. No. Definitely so, smell, Grandma. No, definitely. So not. she was is in the back right? pew, oh. was she? Yeah. She wasn't a pleasant person. No. Oh, oh. Well, <laughs> didn't like kids yeah. at all. Yeah. No. I think. It, look, I think it's a really lovely thing if you're close to your grandparents. Yes. Oh, yeah. Really. Really it is. beautiful thing I, to do. Although the gerberas, I mean, why are we called gerberas? Every granny you ever see is carrying a bloody gerbera. They're the most awful flowers out. Well, obviously the bride like them. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, they, they come, they, you get a gerber with every Free, but, beetle, don't you? Oh, do you? Oh, you oh, do too. Yeah. Yes, yes, you yeah. do. In the beetle. Got to start with this stuff, Ed. <laughs> all right, thank you, ladies. Sorry. Back to you, Deb. We're uncovering all sorts.